What up guys, I'm back. I know it's been a long time since we've done an informational video, but I'm bringing it back and I've got something new to show you guys. The new BioLane wipe off board. Hold on a second. Guess who's back? You know we like to do it big. Ta-da! Gonna be a lot of science going down in this Mark Zuckerberg. Stay tuned. Today, we're starting a new series talking about why diets fail. Now, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know that I'm very passionate about this topic and I speak about it a lot. But I'm using this to compile all this information into one thing. We're going to talk about biochemical, physiological, psychological, sociological reasons why diets fail and how to make yours more successful. Now I got inspired to do this because I'm currently writing my second book, which is my general population fat loss book that is basically gonna be my fat loss manifesto. I'm about two thirds of the way through it and uh, it's gonna be something pretty special. But in the meantime, I've come across a lot of information while doing research for this book and there's no reason I can't share some of it with you guys. So let's get to it. <laughs> Let's talk about why I think diets are failing. So first of all, we really don't have a weight loss problem. I'm not fat, I'm big boned. I do this at seminars, I ask people, do we have a weight loss problem? Everybody raises their hand and the, tr the truth of the matter is we don't have a weight loss problem. Six out of every seven people who are overweight or obese will be able to lose a significant amount of body weight during their lifetime. So why are diets failing? Well, diets are failing because people can't keep the weight off. I can't stop eating. I eat because I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy because I eat. It's a vicious cycle. So even though six out of every seven people who are overweight or obese can lose a significant amount of body weight, the weight regain statistics are shocking. Within a year, 70% will have put back on all the weight they lost. Within two years, that number jumps up to 85%. And within three years, that number is 95%. That means diets have a success rate of 5%. In fact, there was a recent journal article that came out a few years ago. The title was, the mediocre results of dieting. Because really, if you looked at the, the statistics and you looked at what qualifies as a successful weight loss diet, if sustained weight loss is the outcome we're looking for, dieting produces pretty terrible results. What's even worse is of those people, one third to two thirds will add more body fat than they originally had. So an example of this is my father. Dad? He did a ketogenic low carb diet about 15 years ago. He lost 30 pounds in that diet. Within a year, he added it all back, and over the next 10 years, he went up another 30 pounds. So his body fat overshooting was 30 extra pounds. Now, I'm not dogging the ketogenic diet, but what was the reason that he regained it? Well, it was lack of sustainability. This is gonna be a very continuous theme for me. Whatever diet you're on, if you can't see yourself doing that diet, that lifestyle, in five months, a year, two years, five years, then you have to rethink your plan because it's going to fail. The research is very clear. You will put back on all that weight if the habits and lifestyle you develop during weight loss are not continued into weight maintenance, you will put back on the weight and possibly more. Are you kidding me? Also, yo-yo dieting, a significant problem. What is yo-yo dieting? Also referred to as weight cycling. So people who lose weight, gain it back, lose weight, gain it back, lose weight, gain it back. Why is this such a problem compared to maybe, say somebody who dieted for a long time, regained it over a longer period of time? We're gonna talk about this in more depth, but basically, every time you diet, you are awakening the body's self-defense system. This is a line by a researcher named Paul McLean that really stood with me. He's a researcher at the University of Denver. You have to think about fat loss as 
mini starvation. You're signaling to your body that energy is scarce. When energy is scarce, that can indicate famine. What is the body's response to that? The body's response is to defend you against starvation. So what is that self-defense system made up as? Well, fortunately, we're gonna show you. All right, so what is this self-defense system? Well, it's basically a three-pronged attack that's developed over thousands of years of evolution to prevent you from starving yourself or from being starved. The purpose of this system is to reduce the energy gap. So when you diet, your fat cells shrink. This signals to your brain, particularly, that you're in an energy gap. And the energy gap results in more energy being desired than is required. And basically, it's a three-pronged attack where the first prong is to reduce your caloric expenditure. Your lower total daily energy expenditure goes down. And we're going to do a whole video just on this part of it. But this is through metabolic adaptation where you decrease basal metabolic rate, non-exercise, activity thermogenesis, voluntary activity, and a whole host of other things that cause your total daily energy expenditure to go way down. Further, your brain, after integrating these signals from the adipose tissue, signals you to become hungrier and increase your energy intake. So to narrow this energy gap, you're lowering that calories out and attempting to raise calories in. This is going to make continued weight loss more difficult. Most of us who have done a diet know that if you start a diet, whatever intake you started out at, you don't just keep losing weight forever. Eventually you hit a weight loss plateau. Even if you're doing the cardio, you're doing the lifting, and you're, you're being very consistent with your diet, eventually you plateau. That is this energy gap becoming narrowed due to decrease energy expenditure. But the second prong of this, of this attack by the body's self-defense system is really interesting. While you're dieting, your body is already preparing you for restorage. So we can see this in people who, when they refeed, there's what's called increased efficiency of refeeding. Normally, if you have a high calorie meal, if you haven't been in a calorie, calorie deficit, your body will dissipate a lot of that energy as heat. Some of you might have actually experienced this before where you have a high calorie meal and you actually get hot. That's thermogenesis. That's wasting that energy as heat because your energy expenditure is higher. When you diet, you become much more efficient at storing that energy. It makes sense from an evolutionary perspective as well. If you were in a famine, when you came across a, a potential source of food, you would want to be able to capture all that energy without wasting it. The less you waste, the more you capture, the more you can reduce this energy gap. But also, you have increased expression of genes that deal with body fat storage. So even while you're dieting and you're losing fat, your body is already preparing you to regain fat. That's the second prong of this attack. The third prong of this attack is to make future weight loss more difficult. And this is done through a lot of adipose tissue modifications that we're gonna talk about. But specifically, there's actually evidence that at the end of a diet, in the trans, what we call transition period, where you're going from weight loss to weight maintenance and then weight gain, there's a possibility that you can actually increase the number of your fat cells. Typically, Fat cell number is set and doesn't change, but it appears that in a post-diet period with the specific hormonal milieu, if you overeat too much, it's possible to increase your fat cell number. And we're gonna do a whole video on that as well. This, I think, explains a lot of why people tend to yo-yo diet, or what we call weight cycle. In fact, there was a study done that was in rats. Oh, rats. <laughs> but it fits with a lot of what we observe in humans. So I have these circles here, which are supposed to be representative of your body fat mass. So bigger circle, more body fat. Smaller circle, less body fat. It's not like a triangle. A triangle has like a corner and the ends. This one is a circle. Okay, we get it. There was a study where they took these rats through two sequences of dieting and then regaining. They restricted them, 
and then they gave them as much food as they want and let them regain, restricted them again, let them regain again. What was extremely interesting is during both diet periods, they had them on the exact same amount of calories. But check out what happened. During the first diet period, they lost at this, I, I'm keeping everything relative, at a one times pace. So they lost at a normal pace. During the regain period, they regained weight twice as fast. During the second diet phase, they lost at half of the original rate. Say that again, half of the original rate. And they regained in the second phase at three times the original rate. Again, this is in animals, but we see this in humans too. We see people who the more times they try to diet, the more body fat they gain. And in fact, there is a strong correlation between the number of times that people try to diet in their life and how much fat they gain. And it's not just a genetic thing. Some people will say, well, that's just a correlation. People who are fatter are more likely to diet and that's why those things are related, which is true. But they've done studies in homozygous twins, twins with the exact same genetic makeup, and show that the twin who tries to diet more during their life, on average, ends up with more body fat. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this series and one of the central themes that I want to emphasize and it's one of the themes in my book as well is that every time you diet you activate this self-defense system. The more times you activate it and the more intensity at which you activate it in terms of caloric restriction the more powerful it's going to become. I'm not saying dieting is useless. What I'm saying is dieting can fuck you up if you don't do it correctly. So in this video series, I'm really gonna try and break down what happens from improper dieting, why it's not working, and how to do it better. So that hopefully, in the future, you guys can keep off more of the body fat that you lose. All right guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like the video, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.